Let's talk about patients with acute limb ischemia. We define acute limb ischemia as a sudden reduction in limb perfusion, which threatens limb viability. Mainly, we see it affecting patients' legs, but sometimes we see it affecting their arms. Truly acute limb ischemia is not very common. It affects about 0.01% of US adults every year, making it about 30 times less common than chronic limb-threatening ischemia. For many years now, true acute limb ischemia has been a decreasingly frequent entity on the wards, but we are seeing more and more patients present with acute on chronic limb ischemia. In terms of risk factors, acute limb ischemia is more likely in patients with atrial fibrillation. We also see it sometimes in patients who've had a myocardial infarction and have a sudden dysrhythmia. Smokers, patients with known atherosclerosis, and patients who've had a previous lower limb revascularization tend to be more prone to acute on chronic ischemia. The clinical features of acute limb ischemia are the classic six Ps we talk about. Early features are pain, pallor, pulselessness, and a perishingly cold limb. At this stage, the patient's limb is probably salvageable. The remaining two Ps, paresthesia and paralysis, are late features. Paresthesia indicates that the nerves have been damaged by ischemia, whilst paralysis indicates that the muscles have been damaged or have died. Both of these signs occur late in the path of the acute ischemic injury, and they are poor prognostic features. By the time the patient develops these signs, the situation may no longer be retrievable. The majority of acute limb ischemia is caused by an embolus. About 80% are embolic. So a piece of chronically organized thrombus breaks off from its original location. This is usually the heart. It then travels through the arteries until it gets stuck, usually at a point where the artery divides into two or three. How far it travels and where it gets stuck depends on the size of the embolus relative to the size of the vessels. Most of them make it as far as the leg, where they tend to get stuck either at the common femoral bifurcation or the popliteal trifurcation, in both cases leading to an acutely ischemic leg. Some of them travel to the arm, where they tend to get stuck at the brachial bifurcation. Here it tends to manifest itself as an acutely ischemic arm. Occasionally, if the embolus is large enough, it will get stuck at the aortic bifurcation. This can result in a patient presenting with bilateral acute lower limb and pelvic ischemia. These are called saddle emboli. They are frequently missed as everyone thinks of different causes of loss of lower limb power and nobody thinks about the circulation until it's too late. So always keep it in the back of your mind. The remaining 20% of acute limb ischemia is due to thrombosis. This can be thrombosis in situ at a pre-existing stenosis where the plaque ruptures. Sometimes a bypass graft from a previous bypass operation will occlude acutely. And occasionally, long-standing popliteal aneurysms thrombose in situ, resulting in an acutely ischemic limb. As a general rule, thrombosis tends to be the mechanism in acute on chronic ischemia. Embolus tends to be the mechanism in true acute limb ischemia. The exception tends to be popliteal aneurysms, where thrombosis in the aneurysm often produces an acutely ischemic limb. Clinical evaluation involves a history and an examination. The typical history these patients present with is sudden onset limb pain and pallor. Pins and needles are a late feature, so don't let the absence of pins and needles make you dismiss the diagnosis. When you examine the patient, the affected limb looks pale. There will generally be no pulses palpable below the level of the blockage. There may be venous guttering on limb elevation. The limb will feel cool. In the late stages, sensation will be reduced compared to the other leg, as will power, and there may also be muscle tenderness. Fixed skin staining indicates capillary rupture of the tissues. A limb with fixed skin staining is unlikely to be salvageable. When it comes to investigating a patient who you think has acute limb ischemia, you must remember that time is muscle. You have probably about six hours from the time the limb became ischemic. That means the time the patient developed symptoms 
not the time you first saw them, which is likely to be several hours later. The absolute priority is to get the patient into an operating theatre and get arterial flow re-established. While you want to avoid unnecessary delay, there are a few quick investigations that the patients need. They should have a full blood count. You need to check their renal function as these patients may develop renal impairment due to muscle death. A clotting screen is important as you're going to anticoagulate them. And an acute limb event is often a complication of an acute myocardial infarction. Check their troponin level. A 12 lead ECG will tell you whether or not they have myocardial ischemia or whether or not they're in fast atrial fibrillation. A chest X-ray is useful to rule out signs of cardiac failure. In terms of arterial imaging, in some units, cross-sectional arterial imaging with a CT or MR angiogram can be performed very quickly without introducing unnecessary delay. In other units, such as my own, trying to get a CT scan out of hours may take more time than your patient's limb has. So I often take these patients straight to theatre and do my own angiogram on the table. While you're waiting for the surgeon to get there, give your patient with an acutely ischemic limb some oxygen, establish IV access and give them 5,000 units of heparin. Give them some pain relief and make sure that theatre and anaesthetics have been warned to expect the patient. In terms of interventional options, these vary depending on whether you're dealing with an embolic event or a thrombotic event. And it follows that you need to be able to tell embolic from thrombotic. With an embolic event, we generally just pass a simple balloon catheter down the artery and retrieve the clot from wherever it's lodged. These are called Fogarty embolectomy catheters. Students tend to suggest thrombolysis for an embolus, but thrombolysis tends not to work in this situation. Thrombolysis works really well when you're dealing with fresh thrombosis. But the emboli causing acutely ischemic limbs tend to be bits of chronically organized thrombus with a lot of fibrous tissue in them. So unsurprisingly, thrombolysis tends not to work in these situations. Thrombolysis might work if you're dealing with a thrombotic event. So if you're dealing with a stenosis, which is thrombosed in situ or a thrombosed bypass graft, thrombolysis might have a role. It depends on whether or not the patient's leg is sufficiently compensated to survive for long enough for the thrombolysis to do its work. And the patient will generally need a subsequent interval intervention, either to revise the bypass graft or to angioplasty and underlying stenosis. If your patient does not have a compensated leg though, you probably don't have time for thrombolysis to work. And in these patients, you may need to go straight to a surgical bypass. Obviously, interventions for acute limb ischemia may result in complications. So you have the general complications of any procedure like bleeding and infection, and then you have complications which would be specific to acute limb revascularization. These include rhabdomyolysis from dead muscle tissue getting into the circulation, which can lead to renal failure. Reperfusion of ischemic muscle can cause the muscle cells and tissues to swell, which may lead to a compartment syndrome. So you may need to think about fasciotomies prophylactically in these patients. Sometimes wash out of the ischemic tissue as it's reperfused can result in cardiac arrhythmias. The reperfusion may not work and the patients may end up with limb loss. And even in successful cases in the long term, if there has been significant muscle damage, they may end up with a Volkmann's ischemic contracture. I've said a couple of times now that you need to be able to distinguish acute limb ischemia from acute on chronic limb ischemia. In acute limb ischemia, while the affected leg might be pale, pulseless and white, you often find that the pulses in the opposite leg are all present. They usually have no chronic signs of peripheral arterial disease, so no trophic nail changes, no hair loss, no thin, shiny skin. And they often have an obvious precipitant. So for example, they're in fast AF or they've just had a heart attack. 
In acute on chronic ischemia, on the other hand, you often find that there are absent pulses in both legs. They often do have some of those chronic PAD signs like trophic nail changes. They may well tell you they've had previous angioplasties or bypasses. And overall, their foot is more likely to be compensated. So there may be some delayed but present capillary refill and the foot may be cool, but not freezing cold. The revision notes are at vasculartutor.com. Don't forget to throw us a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos.